I am Laura Dixon, and you are listening to the Naturally Thin for Life podcast, episode number 211, Overcome Weight Loss Failure. Welcome to the Naturally Thin for Life podcast. Get ready to learn how to live in your dream body, free from all the diet rules. You're going to learn the naturally thin mindset and strategies so that you never need to count, track, or measure your food ever again. And instead, you get to live the rest of your life at your body's optimal weight with the peace and freedom you've been craving. Let's dive in. Hello, friends. Today, we're going to talk about when you're feeling like your weight loss maybe isn't going exactly how you want it to go, or you feel like it's failed, or you feel like you've tried so many times before and you're so afraid of failing again. And I think when we are used to trying to lose weight and we've spent years or decades trying, and we have attempted so many times before, it can be really easy to get down on yourself. And when you think about how defeating and disappointing and discouraging and you put in all this effort and all this restriction and all of this energy into your exercise and your food plan and then maybe like the holidays hit and then you kind of like throw it all to the wayside or you just put in all this energy and effort and you don't get the result that you want and you do this over and over and over again, sometimes for multiple decades, it kind of makes sense that we get defeated and we feel discouraged. And it can be really easy to get down on yourself to the point where you feel so discouraged or so defeated and you start to tell yourself like, I okay, I have one of two options. Option A, count calories forever or insert whatever strict diet type thing you're doing or, you know, never eat carbs or run marathons until I die and drive myself crazy, right? That's option A. Or option B, give up and just accept that this is going to be the body weight that I live at forever. Now, if you want to do either of those two things and you enjoy those options, that's great for you if you're excited about those. But for most of you, that isn't the case. You don't want to drive yourself crazy, <laughs> through option A, counting calories forever. And you don't really want option B either because you don't want to just accept living at the current body weight you're at for the rest of your life because you know, like you know deep down you will feel so much better in a lighter body. Now, side note, I do actually think part of option B of accepting and finding peace with your current body weights can be a very good idea. And it's probably a good idea and a good place to start because accepting the body you are in as you lose the weight is really important, right? But that's not really what I'm talking about in option B. I'm talking about kind of like throwing up your hands and being like, I guess this is just how I'm going to have to live forever, really uncomfortable in my body. And I think one of the primary reasons we get into this catch-22 where it's like a lose-lose situation, we give ourselves two options. <laughs> option A, count calories, drive ourselves crazy forever. And option B, give up and accept that we're never going to lose the weight and just like succumb to not feeling how we want to feel in our bodies. I think we get into this lose-lose situation because we think and we've tried so many times before. So we're like, there just must not be any other options. We think there is no option C, D, E, or F. We think that these are the only two options. And what I'm going to talk about today, I think really when you know how to overcome weight loss failure in the way I'm going to talk about today, can really help you get out of believing there are only these two lose-lose type of options. And one of the reasons I think sometimes we also get in this catch-22 is we're just so sick and tired of failing. We're so sick and tired of attempting not getting what we want or losing the weight but driving ourselves crazy. We're so sick and tired of it. And so it makes sense that at some point we're like, we don't know what else to do. So we kind of throw our hands up in the air. And I want to help you reframe weight loss failure in a different way so that you can see that you don't need to be stuck in believing that it's either option A, count every morsel of food, drive yourself crazy, or option B, throw up your hands and give up and not feel the way you really want to feel deep down in your body. And with this, I think it can be helpful to kind of normalize why we want to give up at some point, right? When I shared earlier, right, when you've spent years or decades dieting and you still aren't at the weight you want, or you maybe have lost weight, but you're just so overly preoccupied with food. Like I hear time and time again from women who they're like, yeah, I lost this weight through this really strict diet protocol and I was able to follow it for years, but 
I developed an eating disorder and I've even had some of them share their stories here on the podcast, right, where we either don't lose the weight we want or we create such an unhealthy relationship with ourselves and food and we feel obsessive about it. It makes sense. You want to (laughs) quit. And I think when we have lost weight in this way, this kind of crazy obsessive diet way, it makes sense as well that we start to say to ourselves, I just never want to think about it again meaning food in your weight. When I ask people sometimes what their dream is when they think about being at their naturally thin weight, they often say this, I just never want to think about it again. And I I think really that phrase and that thought, that sentence of I just never want to think about it again, and the never is in like all capital letters with a lot of exclamation points. I think that's really code for saying, I just want to stop worrying about it. I just want to stop obsessing about it. I just want to stop driving myself crazy, right? Because here's the deal. You're going to eat. You're going to eat every day till you die. So you probably do actually want to think about food. You probably do actually want to think about your weight when you really think about it. But what you're saying when you're telling yourself, I just never want to think about it again, what you're really saying is that You want a completely different approach. You want a completely different relationship with food in your body so that when you do think about food in your body, it's enjoyable. You have enjoyable thoughts. You feel proud. You feel confident. You feel lean. You feel fit. You love the way food tastes. You love the way it feels. You love how you feel in your body, right? You want that type of relationship. It's not that you never want to think about it ever, ever again, right? And I just, it's not realistic when you think about the fact that we have to eat to feed our bodies. Right. I think what we're really saying is we're just so sick and tired of all the craziness and the insanity. We just want an enjoyable relationship with our body, an enjoyable relationship with food. So like I was saying, I think a lot of us get into this quote unquote rut of I'm either going to give up or I'm going to drive myself crazy. And then we're like, well, I don't really want to drive myself crazy. So it starts to kind of seem like the lesser of two evils is to give up. And one of the reasons I think we do that as well is because we failed so many times before. So I want to really help you reframe your weight loss, quote unquote, failures. Because here's what a lot of us do when we, quote unquote, fail. And I'm going to say, quote unquote, and I'm going to define it for you and how I suggest you start to view failure in a different way. But when we fail, we say to ourselves, I'm never going to get this. There's something wrong with me. My body hates me. I'm going to struggle forever. I must be missing something. So then not only have you quote unquote failed and you're not at the weight you want, but then you layer on all this like self pity, this regret and this guilt and the shame and this self-loathing. So now not only are you not feeling physically how you want to feel because you're not at the weight you want or you're just like driving yourself mad trying to keep the weight off, but then you've layered on all this really intense negative emotion as if there's like something wrong with you. So what if instead you thought of failure like this? Failure simply means my actual result in this moment does not equal my expected result. And that's it. I had an expectation of my actual result, and they don't equal. They're not the same, just in this moment. And it's really important when you think about failure in this way that you remind yourself it's in this moment, not into perpetuity. I just had an expectation And what the actual result is in my life doesn't meet that expectation for just right now. So that then when you reframe and think about failure this way, then you can go right to, okay, why? Why is my actual result in this moment not equal to my expected result? And you want to answer that as objectively as possible. Think about as logical as you can be, as neutral and as kind of what I'll call a little bit of like drama free, meaning that you're not adding in all that shame and regret and guilt and that there's something wrong with you story because it's just not useful. My guess is it's probably not the first time you've told yourself some version of there's something wrong with me. I'm never going to get this. My body hates me. I'm going to struggle forever. And my guess is if you've been telling yourself that, It hasn't led you to peace and freedom living in your dream body without any rules. (laughs) The story, and I say story as in like the way that we talk to ourselves about ourselves in this situation, that story, it doesn't do anything. 
And so instead, when you answer objectively to why did I quote unquote fail, as in simply, why is my actual result not equal to my expected result? Let me figure out why. And you do that with a very objective reason. It might sound like, well, I've been eating when I'm not hungry. I am eating when I'm stressed. I maybe am eating the kids' leftovers when I'm not hungry. Or I eat a bunch of snacks and then I feel obligated to eat dinner with my family. So I go to bed not feeling so great. Or maybe I'm eating way past my satisfaction level and I do this every night at nine o'clock when I'm, you know, relaxing. And when you think about answering this objectively, then all of the sudden you view failure in this very different, kind of much more factual way with a very solvable problem. Because if the reason you failed is your body hates you, or the reason you've been telling yourself you've quote unquote failed is because you're never going to get this or there's something wrong with you. That's like a insurmountable, insolvable problem that your brain's never going to figure out an answer to. But when you remind yourself, oh, failure is simply my actual result in this moment does not equal my expected result. And you immediately turn to, okay, let's figure out why. Why is that? Let me figure that out objectively and then let me solve for that. The solution becomes so much more obvious and so much more logical versus getting so down on yourself. And when you have a solution to a problem that's like, oh, I need to just work on, you know, making peace with some hunger or I need to work on allowing my stress without eating, right? That's so much more solvable. And having a solvable problem is infinitely more motivating than having an unsolvable problem. Who wants to be like, yes, I'm going to solve for my body hating me? That's not solvable. So you're just adding to the defeat and the disappointment and that cycle of getting so down on yourself. And the more and more you do that, it starts to be really depressing, right? And I think I've shared this story here on the podcast before that I had taken my husband and I don't actually think we were married at the time, to a Green Bay Packers game as a gift. I don't even remember what it was for, Christmas, something. Anyways, we go up to Green Bay, which is a couple hours from where we live, and we're staying in an Airbnb. And I had been avoiding the scale for a significant period of time, like not just a couple days or a couple weeks. I don't know if it had been a year or months. I avoided the scale and didn't get on the scale before we got married leading up to our wedding. So maybe actually, as I'm thinking about this, maybe we had just gotten married and it had been, you know, a year since I had gotten on the scale. I don't know, something like that. But I had been avoiding the scale, but I had been really cognizant and trying to be cognizant of what I was eating and how much I was eating and my hunger level. And I was traveling a lot for work. So I was trying to be really cognizant of that. And they had a scale at this Airbnb we're at. Why in the world I got on it in that moment, like on a trip when I hadn't been on it in a while? Probably not the best idea. However, in retrospect, I had so much insight from it. But I remember getting on the scale and I had an expectation of what I thought my weight should be. I don't even know what it was. And I don't even know the exact number at the time. But I had some expectation because I thought I was doing so well. I thought I was, you know, I was walking a lot and I was being very conscious of what I was eating. And at the time, I was not nearly as in tune to really feeling like energized and light and clean and just loving those feelings in my body. I was still kind of thought I was kind of micromanaging my food appropriately. I thought I was just, you know, not eating too much. That's kind of what I thought I was doing and that it was going to be working really well. So I had this expectation of getting on the scale at this Airbnb and I got on the scale and fail. My expected result was not the same as my actual result in that moment by like a significant long shot, like not just a couple pounds. I don't remember if it was 20 pounds. I don't remember if it was 15 pounds or 25 pounds. It was more than just a couple pounds, like the expectation versus actual result difference. And I was devastated. I mean, devastated, like crying on the bed. And like he was like, what, what is up? And I mean, he knew, I think, that I struggled maybe in my relationship with food or that I was cognizant of what I ate. He did not know and probably still to this day doesn't totally know because I don't think you can know unless it's been an experience that you've had yourself. But he was kind of like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, 
I, is this that big of a deal? Like, you know, I think you're beautiful. Like, who care? Like, and I was like, no, no, you don't understand. I've been like putting so much mental energy and effort into like being very conscious of what I eat and not overeating. And I like thought I was going to lose weight, but I've gained weight. And I was like, so, so upset. And the reason I was so upset is because I was like, there's something wrong with me. I'm never going to figure this out, right? All the thoughts I kind of gave you before are thoughts I've all had, that my body is just never going to lose the weight I want. And that's why I felt so devastated and disappointed. And I felt that way for a probably somewhat significant period of time. And then I remember thinking, I'm going to figure this out. And I didn't have like a approach. I didn't have a way. I just was like, I just know I have to figure this out. But if I would have in that moment taken what I'm offering to you here and been like, okay, I had an expectation. I have an actual result. They do not equal in this moment. Why do I think that is? And I'm going to give you some more ways to kind of drill down into that for yourself. But if I would have done that in this moment, I probably would have reflected back and been like, yeah, I mean, I'm being conscious of what I'm eating, but I'm still overeating sometimes. And like, especially when I have a couple of drinks, I like justify extra snacks. And oh, yeah, I tell myself, you know, when I work out in the morning, like it's okay to eat a little bit more. And so I'm not really allowing my hunger. If I would have told myself that, I've been like, okay, we have like three things, four things. Let's solve for those. It's so much more motivating when you reframe, quote unquote, failure in that way. And another benefit of viewing failure this way is that it just stops being so daunting when you think about going after your goal weight again and living in your dream body. One of the reasons I was so devastated in that moment is I was just like, I, I can't keep doing this. I can't keep driving myself crazy hyper-focusing on the food. I can't keep getting up in the morning to do like I was doing like, I don't know if I was doing P90X at the time or I'd done these Jillian Michaels DVDs where you do one every day in the morning for like 30 to 45 minutes. And don't get me wrong, I like a good workout DVD, but like I didn't want to be doing that. That wasn't, I didn't like feel good necessarily afterwards. I like dreaded it every morning. So I'm just making myself do all these things, not getting the result I want. So that I'm getting so down on myself, feeling devastated and disappointment and discouraged. So then the thought of going after my goal weight again is just like the motivation fades and it fades and it fades because I was just so sick of what I was doing and so sick of getting down on myself. And so then it's like the dream and the desire to live in my dream body, it just started to like diminish and diminish and diminish. And one of the reasons this is so important that you reframe weight loss, quote unquote, failure this way is not only so that you know what to solve for and it becomes a solvable problem that just isn't as big of a deal and it actually has a solution versus there's something wrong with me, which has no solution and also just isn't true. But when you reframe the failure this way, it's so helpful because there will be failure along the way. It's an inevitable part of the process. So it happens in micro ways as well, even as you're losing weight. And this is something I share with everyone in my Naturally Thin for Life membership is the importance of understanding that part of eating for the rest of our lives, I think, is that there's going to be some trial and error. Now, you're going to get way better at it. It's going to be far and few between. But let's say, for example, you have an expected result of I'm going to eat this veggie meat dish out at a restaurant. You're like, I usually feel pretty good when I eat some veggies and some meat. So you go to a restaurant and you choose that and you're like excited about it. You really love, you know, the steak and the broccoli and the carrots that you chose and you like can't wait to eat that. And you like genuinely think I'm going to go home and I'm going to be feeling energized and lean. I'm going to be feeling so good. I would all just enjoy the meal and the people I was with and I'm going to feel the way I want physically in my body. That's, let's say, your expected results. And then you eat it and you feel bogged down. And you're like, okay, so that we could call a quote unquote failure, meaning I had an expected result in this moment of being able to eat this food and going home feeling energized and lean. But my actual result in this moment doesn't match up. So let's just understand why that is. Rather than going down the all too common road of, ugh, see, 
Now the scale is going to go up tomorrow. I'm never going to be able to lose this weight. I'm an idiot for thinking I could do this. And it isn't fair that other people get to be thin and I'm not like all that, right? You know, that road that so many of us go down versus just asking yourself, okay, why doesn't my expected result of eating this food and my expected result of going home feeling energized and lean, why doesn't it match up to my actual results? And then just answer that really objectively. Maybe you're like, huh, it's because I ate maybe a little bit more in quantity than my body really wanted. Maybe that's the answer. Or maybe you're like, huh, I ate past the feelings of energized and lean in my body because I was really distracted with, you know, other people eating and I was done before them. So I just felt obligated and that's why I did it. Or maybe think, oh, you know, the last time we ate there, I kind of felt this way too, but I don't know if I really put two and two together. And then you might be like, hmm, I wonder if it's the type of oil they cook with. I wonder if it's the type of, you know, that cut of beef. Who knows? But all of a sudden, you've stopped making it mean that you are never going to lose the weight because you didn't go home from the restaurant feeling energized and lean. Now you're like, okay, maybe I'll just try something different at that restaurant. You know, we go to a restaurant here that's it's so good. It's primarily plant based and gluten free and it's so tasty. They make everything there. But the last couple of times I've been there, I haven't left feeling the way I wanted to feel. And the same with my husband. And I'm like, why do I think that is? And I was like, I think it's just the plethora of types of foods that I combine. Meaning when we go there, there's so many good options that I like we get a couple of appetizers and I like have a couple bites of this and a couple bites of that and sometimes more than a couple bites. And then even this last time we went, I only had a couple bites of the main food that I got and I brought the rest home. And I'm like, I think it's just a lot of a bunch of different types of food. And when I combine them, they don't feel great. So I'm like, okay. We have a plan to go there in the coming month. And I'm like, I think when I go there, I'm just going to, you know, either eat like one or two of the appetizers and just have that be what I eat because they're like very significant and large. Or I'm just going to eat a main meal and that's it. And then I'll see how that goes. Right. It's so much easier than like, oh, I'm never going to lose the weight and I haven't figured this out. It just takes all of the devastating drama out of losing weight. And the reason this is so important is not just for your motivation and the solvability of what you are working on so that you can have the exact relationship with food in your body that you want, but because I think it's an inevitable part of living in a human body and eating food. I still, like I was sharing in that restaurant example, I still have times where I eat food and I don't feel as optimal as possible. And you will too. We are not perfect machines or robots. (laughs) You may eat something, it feels great, and then eat the same thing the next day or a month later or a year later, and maybe it doesn't feel great now. So you can either tell yourself in that moment, oh, I still haven't figured this out. Because this food that I thought felt great because it did a year ago and I tried it now or it did yesterday and I tried it now, it doesn't now. You can either say that to yourself, still haven't figured this out, never going to figure this out. Or you can simply say, hmm, I had an expected result. It didn't equal my actual result in this moment. I wonder why. And then just take your best guess at why. So you know if you are dramatizing failure, we'll say. As in, and I don't mean that in a bad way or a like demeaning way. I just mean that our brains, I think, when we fail and fail and fail and fail, and we haven't taught them to think about failure, especially with weight loss in this way. And I think there's just so much stigma with weight and trying to lose weight and that it's a discipline thing or a control thing or an ambition thing or something like that. There's just so much in our heads and in our society that I think we have around losing weight that it kind of makes sense that we make it a little bit dramatic in our own minds. And because we haven't just taken the time and developed the skill of really taking the drama out of it. So you know if you're doing this, obviously based on how you're thinking about it, right? What it sounds like in your mind. But you can also tell based on how you're feeling, based on the predominant emotions you feel when it comes to losing weight. If you constantly feel disappointed or discouraged or down or defeated or hopeless or some of those feelings where it just feels like you're never going to get there, right? Because you're 
probably telling yourself you're never going to get there, right? Those thoughts are just creating a thought feeling loop all of the time where you're just feeling predominantly down or disappointed. And maybe you go to like very high moments of excitement and motivation, but they don't last very long. And another way you can know if you're doing this, if you are what I'll call dramatizing failure, is if you coddle yourself when it comes to your goal. So what I mean by that when you're coddling yourself when it comes to your goal is that you're really kind of diminishing your desire for your goal. And it can sound like saying to yourself, well, I mean, I'm not that overweight. It's not that big of a deal. I don't really need to lose the weight. My partner, my husband, my kids, my family, they love me as I am. I'm not that big. Or you might say to yourself, and I used to do this, well, I'm thinner than so-and-so and like come up with my mind. Even just like someone on TV, I'd be like, well, good thing I'm thinner than so-and-so. Or I'd say, and I probably didn't use the word thin, I'd probably just say I'm not as big as so-and-so and and like compare myself to someone on TV to like try to make myself feel better. Or I would say, you know, it's okay. Look at all these other things that I have going on in my life that are so great. So with this, what I'll call like kind of coddling yourself and diminishing your true desire for your goal to lose weight, I am not saying that you should not relish in your husband or kids loving you, right? Or you should not be proud of your family. You should not be proud of the relationship you have with your partner, or you shouldn't be proud of the amazing career you've built. I'm not saying that at all, but don't use those things to diminish and justify away what you really want, which is to lose weight and not really just to lose weight, but to feel great and to have the mental peace and freedom you've always wanted. And I think when we are used to getting so down on ourselves and not viewing failure as simply my expected result doesn't equal my actual result in this moment, let me figure out why. When we're not doing that and we're in the regret and the disappointment and the defeated and the shame cycle, so then our brain is like trying to protect us from like living in all of that just like regret and disappointment and shame. And so our brain is like, look, you have all these other great things, right? It's like our brain is trying to be like, let me give you a break from being so mean to yourself. And so it's almost like a protective mechanism where our brain wants to diminish our goal so that we just stop being so kind of mean to ourselves. But I want you to just take the whole being mean to yourself thing off the table. Stop dramatizing the failure by making it mean anything about you. It is simply my expected result doesn't equal my actual results in this moment. Let me figure out why. It has nothing to do with me as a person, my ability to figure it out, my capability to lose the weight, my body not wanting me. It has nothing to do with any of that. I'm going to figure this out. So if you are backing down from your weight goal in your mind, right, or diminishing that you want it, or you're telling yourself why it's okay to not lose weight, of course it's okay to not lose weight, right? I'm not typically talking to someone who like loves their body, feels great, and doesn't want to lose weight, right? I'm talking to those of you who are telling yourself it's okay to not lose weight. So either just decide not to lose weight because you don't want to, or just tell yourself the truth and that you do want to lose weight because you want to feel a certain way. And with that, make a promise to yourself that you're going to stop making any past, current, or future weight loss, quote unquote, failures a reason to back down from your goal. And I do this, by the way, backing down from my goal, not with my weight anymore, but in other areas of my life. I might have a goal for, let's say, the number of women I want to help with this podcast and the number of women I want to help inside the Naturally Thin for Life membership. And I love setting really big goals for myself. And I have ideas on how I'm going to find all of you and how I'm going to reach you and how I'm going to help you, right? And I have this expected results in my mind, right? And I break that down. I have, you know, thoughts for myself years out and I break that down into, you know, a quarter or a month and I have this expected result and then I get an actual result. They don't equal and I'm bummed, right? It's a failure. And sometimes what I will find myself doing is I'll hear my brain be like, well, I mean, I don't really need to help any more people. It's fine. 
or I'll give myself a reason for why I didn't reach the goal, which has nothing to do with it, really, where I'll say to myself, I mean, I'm pregnant or I'm homeschooling my kids or, you know, I just I don't really need that many more people to listen to the podcast. It's fine. Life is good. I have so many other areas of my life that, you know, I do have the expected result is, you know, equal to my actual result. I'll give myself reasons to back down from my goal as a way to sort of like avoid the disappointments and to avoid the quote unquote like feelings of like, I'm never going to get this. There's something wrong with me. What am I not understanding? Like that shame, regret, guilt, failure, dramatization that I sometimes do when I think about other goals outside of my weight now at this point versus what I need to and what I do direct my brain to is what I'm sharing with you, which is to say to myself, okay, Laura, you had an expected result of this and an actual result of this in this moment. And it's really important to remember that my actual result is just in this moment. It's not going to last forever. It's not into perpetuity. Let me just understand why they don't align. Like, let's figure it out. And with your weight, if you find yourself thinking, well, I don't know why. I don't know how to answer that question. I don't know why my expected result is not equal to my actual result in this moment. I don't know why I'm not losing the weight I want. First of all, I want to say, I think that each of our bodies has so much wisdom. So your body does know why. It will tell you. It will want to tell you. Maybe you just want to get better at accessing that. So how you can get started is you can think of asking your body to tell you versus your brain telling you. Think of it instead as your body having like a microphone versus your brain trying to figure out some really complicated math calculus equation, right? Think of if you were to ask your body, hey, body, I thought I was going to be at 170 pounds today, and here I am at 173 pounds. Why is that, right? Don't go to the land of because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm never going to figure this out. This isn't for me. When you're like, why do I think that is? Let your body itself answer. And then you can think of it in four categories. Think of it as, is it my hunger? Category one, right? Am I eating when I'm not hungry? Am I not listening to my hunger? Am I afraid of hunger? Like what is happening with my hunger? Is it my hunger that I want to work on? Is it number two category, my satisfaction level? Am I eating past my satisfaction level? Do I not know what it is? Do I find myself wanting to go to bed feeling really full every night and not feeling the way I want to feel? Have I not even identified that I want to feel light and clean, let's say, whatever it is for you, your ideal optimal satisfaction level that you want to feel in your body? So is it either one, your hunger level, two, your satisfaction level? Is it the food itself? That's number three. Is it the type of food you're eating? Are you like, oh, I notice every time I eat pork, I feel sick. I don't know. That was me. I just was like, you know, every time and I'll try it in a different way and a different flavor and a different cut. And I'm like, every single time, you know, for the past eight times, I think maybe it's the food itself, even though I wasn't overeating in quantity, right? Even though I was eating at my optimal hunger level, stopping at what I thought was in my optimal satisfaction. I was like, no, I think it's just that particular food, right? So is it category one, my hunger, category two, my satisfaction, category three, the food itself, or also category four, are there emotions I need to work through so I'm not eating through them, right? Is there stress in my life that I need to release myself of and work on and work through versus eating? Is there anxiety? Is there restlessness? Is there excitement? Is there uncertainty, right? Is there something happening emotionally for me that is creating me to eat and that I'm trying to kind of distract myself from versus just eating when I'm hungry, stopping when I'm satisfied, choosing food that serves me? And so when you're in this headspace of, okay, there's actual results, there's expected results, and then there's figuring out why. And then you keep it and you constrain the why into these four categories. My hunger, my satisfaction, the food, emotions, right? Nowhere in those categories was, well, it's because I have bad genes or it's because I have a diagnosis and I have a food sensitivity. It's nowhere in there because I, you know, I have struggled my whole life because I've dieted since I was 10. None of those are in there, right? It's just my hunger my satisfaction, the food, and or my emotions. Which one of those four categories? And when you are in this headspace, 
it can feel a little bit more boring <laughs> and like cut and dry. And sometimes our brains really kind of like drama, right? Have you ever noticed when there's like drama going on in the office or drama going on in a friendship or like we obviously sometimes are drawn to drama, like when you're watching the news or TV, like our brains, they kind of just like feast on drama sometimes. So they they have a tendency to like it. Right. So when we're solving for why your weight isn't what you want it to be, why you're not feeling the way you want to feel in your body, it's really important that you make it kind of boring and cut and dry and you take all the drama out of it and then you solve it from there. Reframing weight loss failure in this way in terms of expected result doesn't equal actual result in this moment. Okay, let me figure out why. Is it my hunger, satisfaction, food or emotion? It's not as grandiose and as like big of a deal as, oh, no, I have to figure out why my body hates me or, oh, no, I have to figure out, you know, why I started dieting when I was 10. It's none of that. My suggestion is that you leave the grandiose and the drama and the excitement for another area of your life. And The other thing that I have found to make it a lot easier to think about weight loss failure in this way, to evaluate your expected results versus your actual results and figuring out why very objectively so that you have a very solvable, doable problem for yourself. The way in which I started to view my weight and my relationship with food and my body is I finally got to the place where I was like, there is no other option than I figure this out. When I was sharing with you the story about when I got on the scale and I was feeling so devastated, I was in the land of this catch-22. Either I get crazy strict and restrictive because that's how I had lost weight before, drive myself crazy, or I just give up. But then I finally got to the place where I'm like, no, 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 I'm not doing any of that. There is no other option other than I figure this out. And I started to be able to live in there is no other option than I figure this out. When I started to view failure this way in a much more objective kind of logical drama free way. And when it's something that I really want, I don't want an option to back out for myself. Now, I'm not saying you never let yourself change your mind, right? But don't change your mind when it comes to your weight loss and your weight goal and wanting to feel great in your body because you think you can't do it because you keep failing right? Don't let that be the reason you change your mind. If you really want to feel incredible in your body and you want to lose weight, right? And that's why you want to lose weight is so you can feel incredible. Don't give yourself any other option than I figure this out. So when I started losing weight and I really started kind of developing my own naturally thin mindset, I would tell myself, no, no, I figured this out. So I remember like eating yogurt and granola and like eating these parfaits and I don't eat dairy anymore because I feel super uncomfortable. And I remember, you know, like I would eat it some days and I would feel fine. And then other days and I wouldn't feel fine. And I thought I felt fine. But in hindsight, the comparison between how incredible I feel now compared to then is quite stark. But I would tell myself when I wasn't eating in a way that I was feeling good, I was like, no, no, there is no other option than I figure this out. Like I will figure this out. And when I say figure this out, I meant I will figure this out for me in my body versus I will figure out how to make this method work, right? I wasn't like, I will figure out how to make this diet work forever. I will figure out how to count 1100 calories. I will figure out how to do P90X forever, right? I wasn't like, I'm going to figure out and tie my results that I want to like a very particular diet or method. I was like, no, 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 no. (laughs) I figured this out in a way that works for me, in a way that works for my body, because I want to feel really good. And I want to have this freedom and this peace. And so there literally was no other option for myself than achieving that. And I, for me, that's way of living, meaning living in my dream body, feeling just so energized and light and clean and having so much freedom and not feeling restricted and deprived. That is what being naturally thin means to me. That's what those two words mean to me. And so for me, I would just kind of I wrapped up that whole image for myself into those two words, naturally thin. And so I would say to myself, I I will be naturally thin. Like I know I figure this out. 
And reframing my weight loss failure allowed me to do this because then every time my expected result didn't equal my actual result, I was like, okay, let's figure this out. There is no other option. Now, yes, I am human. And there were still times I was bummed or disappointed. Even now I'm like, when I was, went to that restaurant with the primarily plant-based food and I came home and I wasn't feeling the way I want, I was still like a little bit like, oh, I mean, that kind of sucks because I like feeling good, right? So of course there were times that I was still like, oh, that's a bummer. Or maybe I would have eaten something and felt bloated, you know, this was years ago, but felt bloated for a couple of days. And I would have been like, oh, why did I eat that? I would have kind of gotten a little bit mad at myself. Like I knew I shouldn't have eat that. Or, you know, I would have been like, oh, if I could go back and I would have felt a little bit of that regret. Like, yeah, I'm still human. So I did still have some of that along the way. But I remembered to turn back to, okay, but why didn't I get the result I want? Like, let's figure this out. And the quicker you can pivot to that way of framing quote unquote failure, the faster and faster you figure it out and the more momentum and motivation you have because what's on the other side of figuring that out is feeling physically great and not even wanting the food that doesn't leave you feeling physically great. So friends, try it out. See how much calm, freedom, and peace you can start to experience when you view your weight loss failures this way. And the knowledge you gain about yourself when you think, okay, expected result isn't the same as the actual result in this moment. Now what? Now what do I do? How do I figure this out? Because I do figure this out. Remind yourself that. You want to figure this out. You want to figure out how to live with the exact relationship with food in your body that you want. You can. Don't give yourself any other option. Tell yourself, of course I figured this out. And then reframe your quote unquote failures along the way with this different approach. All right, friends, I hope you all have a great rest of your week. I'll talk with you all next time. Hey, friend, if you're enjoying the podcast, I invite you to come and check out the Naturally Thin for Life membership at naturallythinforlife.com forward slash join, where you'll learn the full naturally thin method broken down into simple and doable steps so that you lose the weight you want peacefully and rapidly and keep it off with ease for the rest of your life. The Naturally Thin for Life membership provides you with the tools to not only lose the weight you want, but customize your mindset and your habits to your unique body and life. As part of the membership, you also get an implementation workbook to ensure your inevitable success. Head over to naturallythinforlife.com forward slash join to get an inside look and tour of the Naturally Thin for Life membership. Hear from countless women who've utilized the tools and the extraordinary successes they've been able to achieve. I hope you join us over there at naturallythinforlife.com forward slash join.